perhaps it's changing too fast for my liking as a resident here, but uh, um, I guess some people would call that progress. Just the way this has gone, saying that anybody can buy a license, and this is what's happened. You've got doctors, lawyers, you've got retired fishermen that have just made so much money off their licenses that they just sit back and lease licenses. There aren't sure fishermen. They're going to hear There's lots going to be done for tourism without putting them out there trying to catch a fish. You don't need to put them all out there trying to catch a fish. You know, you have to put the needs of others ahead of ahead of your own needs. And that's difficult for a lot of people to do, especially when you're faced with the realities of mortgage payments or a pile of bills that are growing or whatever, or, you know, what are you going to do for the future? The crew has always had a well diversified economy. We, uh, we've had the uh, almost 25% logging, 25% fishing, 25% tourism or general general services, and 25% government. Uh, and that's what uh, that's what we're working to keep as a community: that diversity and that overall feeling of it. Well, in the community of Ukula, right beside Clockwood Sound, there's been uh, it's been a major uh, hotbed of um, of well, environmental, industrial kind of um, battleground. I guess it's been a battleground uh, between um, well, between large groups and large industry. Um, and the communities have been the sufferers or the victims of that battle, uh, in my estimation. Now we're we're seeing our 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 former employment base, which was a lot of forestry, gone down now to a very small percentage of what it once was. And, and there's been no value added in our communities. It's just been, we've been basically the harvesters, whether in forest or fishing. And, and most of the resources have gone away to be either used by people other, in other places or to be value added in other places. So we're sitting here, my feeling is on the brink of being totally disenfranchised, that, or, or our, I'm seeing our community right at the brink of extinction, it, to be pretty blunt about it. Well, there was just lots more of everything, like fish, there was a terrific amount of, of, of fish back in those days. I'd say people wouldn't even believe if I told you how much there is, if I could tell you. You just wouldn't believe it at all, you know. But then through the heavier fishing and whatnot, it started to go downhill and downhill. Barkley Sound, when I was young, there used to be 16 guardians in Barkley Sound in the fall looking after each little area, you know. And then they took the guardians off one by one. They took them off, and probably 30 years ago, they were down to one out of Port Alberni with a boat. And all the rest was wide open, which left it wide open for people to go in and clean out these little rivers, which was the, is the backbone of the fish in the ocean, especially coal. I would say there's a hundred rivers in Berkeley Sound that don't have a coho in it now that used to have an abundance of coho in it. When I came here and uh, started in the fish plant in 1983, the plant that I work in used to do up to uh, two million pounds of salmon we used to process. Mm -hmm. Every spring they uh, processed herring for a roll and sent the roll to Japan and uh, over the last few years they've uh, gotten out of salmon gone more towards ground fish and uh, they don't process herring anymore, that's all gone from the community. There used to be two plants that do it, you know, USP and PCP, but uh, neither one of them process herring anymore. And uh, a few years ago, they decided to target on hake and they've uh, gone into serimi processing. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, we're We've lost, you know, the access to the resource and uh, for salmon and herring, and we've evolved into the other things, and it's it's going to be pretty scary looking because, you know, it looks like each thing we go on to, you know, you know, you're following a chain, but it's going to end one of these days. There's just we're already concerned about having enough hake to uh, keep us going for this year. The issue of uh, hake processing. There are uh, two local plants here and they pr process for seven months a year, between seven and nine months a year on 
on Hake, this operation, this has been a repatriation of, of, a, of a process and of a fish, an under, underutilized species in the, in the area here, uh, that we had no opportunity to process. We didn't process four years ago. Um, and it's been quite a change for the community, quite a change for the two processing companies. We have to support, and this is speaking as a counselor, we have to support the industry by providing the infrastructure that they need, the water and the sewer, the streets and the sidewalks. Right now with the plants that we've got, our community is putting up $2 million towards upgrading our water and sewer system to keep the plants here. Mm. And that is being paid for by the people of Euclid. The plants are putting up a certain amount of money. The two levels of government are putting up five and a half million, but the people in Euclid are putting up $2 million towards upgrading the water and sewer. And one of the main reasons is to keep the fish plants here working. Well, part of this infrastructure, it was still going to cost the companies a lot of money, a lot of money. They have to pay for their share of the infrastructure. Now we're looking at next year, the uh, quotas are going to be cut way back. The hay quotas and the ground fish quotas, and probably the shrimp quotas, which is what they they do shrimp and surimi in the other plant and top. So we're looking at all these cutbacks, and there's 300 shore workers in this town that depend on these jobs. But with all these added expenses and everything, how can, how can the companies justify investing if they're not sure that they're going to get enough of the fish to, to make it viable? Uh, we've got communities that have been heavily heavily dependent for their employment and their economies on commercial fishing, on commercial sport fishing, uh, with uh, recreational fishers being taken out by charter operators, and, and those businesses have grown up in the last uh, few years very strongly. Um, I, there's also shellfish fisheries, crab and, and, and gooey duck and urchins and all those other things. There's also salmon farming which is becoming a very important industry for Tofino, Euclid, Port Alberni, the whole area. It has provided a source of new year-round employment. Right now there's, there's about 15 to 19 active farms that change. Some of them go fallow, some of them come back online. And those, in, uh, those are all situated in Clackwood Sound. And that employs about 225 people directly in the local area. If you talk about indirect employment added into that in the whole Alberni Clackwood region, you're looking at about 500 people that are employed um, because of salmon farming or, or support related activities. The change came for us with respect to being able to buy and sell it. Um, the it became very volatile in price. Uh, the markets changed because of uh, farm fish. Um, a large, a large, uh, a large increase in farm fish. Uh, big, w large increase in the world supply of, of salmon. Um, salmon worldwide is uh, has been. A, there's been an increasing supply of salmon worldwide uh, for years now, and it's been because of farming, not because of wild stock. And, and it took and it changed the margins. It changed the picture. So economically, we decided that it, it wasn't wasn't a place to be. We used to have a gillnet herring fishing here, and it would last two to three weeks, and it was a nice little jolt to the economy. And then they made the decision that Barclay Sound would be a same fishing only, which is good for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then the boats come in, take the fish, and leave them, and nothing. We had one local person. He used to make about $60,000 a year off the herring fishery, boat repairs, engine work and that sort of thing. Last year he made $60. Mm. And it's decisions like that that DFO make that we think communities have to have a say in. They have and their restrictions on fish is ridiculous too. Last year they took the limit right off of Ling Cod. People were coming in with down that Reeds Marina there with the Ling Cod 10 inches and 12 inches long and filling them. It's not even fit to eat. And the federal government took the limit right clean off of it. You ask him why? I don't know. Somebody thought it was a good idea. Somebody went to school too long, I think. <laughs> Weren't out in the field to see what's going on and stuff like that, you know. And the same with the spring salmon that they take there. It's supposed to be a 
a great game fish and everything, and they're out there catching little fish 12 inches long, which is ridiculous. It should be at least, I would say, 28 inches long and, and fished in the method with barbless hooks and whatnot, so you've got a real, real game fish. I think one of the most important uh, points is how dependent coastal communities are on the resources in their areas. Uh, and, you know, that comes out at a, at a meeting such as we're at today with this Coastal Communities Conference, where you just see, you know, both, both native and non-native, how important uh, and dependent remote, uh, remote communities like this are on their local resources. I work alongside uh, DFO as a uh, uh, fish cup, so to speak. We, we manage our, our the salmon resource. Um, I uh, enforce my people more um, trained to to um, enforce the uh, fishing regulations amongst our people, our, my own people. And I've noticed that through joint patrols with uh, with our uh, our Department of Fisheries and Oceans people, their enforcement officers. I think I've noticed a little bit of cooperation when when they see a native guardian on board uh, one of their vessels. Mm -hmm. They're more apt to give information or catch monitoring reports and and uh, <clears throat> um, warning that they're more apt to take a warning more seriously. One of the things that I've that I've learned since I work with the with the tribal council is is a different approach to uh, to management which which makes me look at it from a from an ecosystem perspective instead of looking at it on a on a single stock by stock or species by species basis. Uh, and if you look at it from an ecosystem perspective, I think generally on the west coast we see some some uh, ecosystems that are in pretty poor shape. You know, the meetings that I go to and where I listen to, to elders and chiefs from, from the New Channel, they describe, you know, a history of resource abundance on the, on the west coast that's just not there anymore, that we just don't see, or we see it in such a different form now, concentrated in a few uh, man-made, you know, type facilities like our, our big uh, salmon enhancement facilities here on the west coast. That's, that's much different than, than I, what I would see would be a, a natural state. We've also seen a lot of changes in our communities with the vast increase in tourism. Some of that is marine-based, some of that is just uh, based around Pacific Rim National Park. That's provided a real new economic generation for the communities around here as well. Uh, it's it's a, a very strong driver and, and if you you're here during the summer months you, there's, there's people everywhere and the businesses are all open they're all doing great business. Park has uh, probably done a lot of benefit to the area too for preserving the natural uh, ecosystems and uh, making people more aware of what natural uh, environment we have too. But with the park has also come a whole influx of uh, people to our area, especially in the summer months and uh, maybe in the long run, uh, just the extra people coming in the summer puts uh, additional pressure on the ecosystems which you're trying to preserve. A term that we use around here that we've, we've seen written up has been that healthy resources mean healthy communities. Mm -hmm. And you could rate that the other way as well. A healthy community will mean that you'll have healthy resources. If the, uh, if the community views that its quality of life is important and that the quality of life of everybody within the community is equally as important, then you, you, you're beginning to build, uh, you know, true values along those lines. Um, the current processes that we're involved in for solving our problems tend to isolate us from one another. Well, an advi a government would set up an advisory process to deal with sports fishing issues and then set, set up a separate advisory process to deal with commercial fishing issues and then it set up an even a, a set another one for uh, for Aboriginal fishing issues. Um, that process of carving us off into, into what would be termed a, a sector or a group um, tends to isolate us from one another within the community. 
we've been attempting to turn that around and sit down with groups of people within the same room who would ordinarily would likely be at each other's throats or uh, more to the point when they were in their own separate forum they would be only addressing their own needs and never addressing the needs of, of, of the other sectors that needs to change uh, we have hundreds of ghost towns up and down this coast and there's a real um, drive to the center in the sense of urbanization and my real fear what I've seen happen mostly in the last 10 or 15 years is the depletion of the resources because of that urbanization and that centralization that there's a less and less contact with the people in the regions with the resources if, if we don't have a healthy community here um, who's going to steward these resources out here you know, the, the person living in Vancouver or some, or, or in Ottawa or, or someone based in Chicago and a, a multinational corporation who has the rights to the forest or to the fish, are they going to have that stewardship potential that would happen if, you were, if, if, if the people right beside it would have? I don't think so.